So please listen to me carefully because what I am saying and what I'm not saying is important in this video. And I'm going to start off by telling you that what I'm saying in this video does not apply to the whole population of obese people. There are intricate differences and it's a very variable topic. And of course, different people are, should be treated on a case to case basis. But the purpose of this video is for certain populations of obese people who attribute a, their slow metabolism to their weight gain, fat gain and chronic obesity. And I want to explain to you why that's actually completely invalid in this population and how these people actually may need to look at other reasons for the obesity and as such take responsibility for the obesity and hopefully change their lifestyle for the better. To start, let's be clear that of course different people can have, will have different resting metabolic rates. There are many variables such as your age, uh, even gender, your, your amount of muscle mass, if you have disease, if you have thyroid disease, of course there are a multitude of, of issues. In addition, we do have some research into the KSR2 gene, which suggests the idea that, that obesity may have a genetic component to it. And so most certainly, and also in addition, we can look at people who are already obese, who have been chronically obese, who may have developed some sort of leptin resistance uh, or diabetes. And so, of course, there are many, many things which affect your resting metabolic rate and many issues involved in obesity. In no way is it, is it a very simple straight line. Having said that, you have all seen this rhetoric from, from some obese people that I have a slow metabolism, this is why I'm gaining weight. And it's those people that I want to talk to in this video. And the purpose of this video is to help you. It is not to discriminate against you in any way at all. Quotes such as this from the Alternate Daily. We've all seen people who seem to consume infinite amounts of food, yet they never gain any weight. It's almost like a superpower. It's both admirable and frustrating for those who don't possess the same ability. These people seem to be invincible against weight gain. Meanwhile, some of us can't even look at a cupcake without instantly gaining five pounds. And the reason that many people who can eat cupcakes and don't put on, on fat is because they have their eating and their exercise in check. Whereas most likely that person who is eating these foods and putting on, on the weight is in caloric surplus with a sedentary lifestyle. Now, not in all cases, please be clear on that, that please understand the sort of populations I'm talking to. There most certainly are populations of obese people who are in caloric surplus and sedentary, and that is why they're putting on the fat, not because they have some sort of mythical metabolism. You have to look at energy balance and this caloric surplus. And so as we eat more, our body's gonna hold on to this fat. And what happens is over time, the more weight we put on, the more fat we put on with this positive energy balance, our body is going to increase its, its resting metabolic rate to match that level to try and create a homeostasis. Our body is adaptable. This is the adaptation. Now, conversely, I made a video about adaptive thermogenesis, which is the opposite. When we're in chronic negative energy balance and we cut our calories and we're losing calories, uh, a caloric deficit, and our body can adjust to those lower calorie, caloric intake. And that's why some people may stop losing fat at certain levels, of course, with, with many variables included. And if the, if the metabolic rate did not increase to create this energy balance, we would have some sort of indefinite weight gain. And so it's kind of a mechanism, again, to control your weight. Now, do some people bust through that plateau and go to extreme levels of obesity? Of course they do. Of course there are people who continue to add weight chronically to extreme levels and sadly to fatal levels. But with some populations, an overeating would then be matched by an increase in resting metabolic rate, which would level out the energy balance and sort of maintain a certain level of, of obesity. Now, the speed at which that happens, the speed of the change, etc., the weight that it, we don't know those figures exactly, again, because it's case to case and it's highly variable. But this generic concept and most certain rhetoric of, I have a slow metabolism, that's why I'm obese for many people, for specific populations, is not helpful at all. And subsequent workout programs and eating programs which play into that myth are not helpful also. And so it may be more useful to look at other factors, such as 
the fact that you may be eating too many calories, you may be getting too little physical activity. And Dr. Eddie Joe says, bottom line, obese individuals have a comparatively high metabolic rate and therefore have a large propensity for weight loss. And so the good news for these people is due to their high metabolic rate, they do have the potential to lose fats quite quickly if they change their habits and they create a negative energy balance through their eating and through their training. And so I hope this video may have been useful. And if you are somebody that feels as though it is your metabolism which is causing your obesity, I would urge you to think again and look at other lifestyle factors and be honest with yourself. I genuinely hope that this video may have helped someone. I'll see you soon.